Football season isn't the only thing making a comeback tonight. Linkin Park are also back. Aside from sharing a couple of previously unreleased songs over the last few years, the band hasn't been active since the death of Chester Bennington in July of 2017. But after performing at an event in Los Angeles earlier today, releasing a new song and announcing a new album and tour dates, it's clear that they're ready to start their next chapter with new vocalist Emily Armstrong. There was a lot leading up to this moment, so keep watching to learn everything Linkin Park just revealed how we got here, and what's in store for their future. All right, we have a lot to unpack here, and all of these details were just shared as the band was taking the stage in Los Angeles. For starters, Emily Armstrong of the band Dead Sarah was revealed as Linkin Park's new co-vocalist alongside Mike Shinoda. Also returning to the lineup are Johan, Brad Delson, and Dave Phoenix Farrell. Armstrong isn't the only new member though, as they've also welcomed Colin Britton as their drummer, who's known for producing works with artists such as Elenium and 1OK OK Rock. They also shared their first song with Armstrong called The Emptiness Machine and announced the details for their upcoming new album, From Zero, which will be out November 15th and features a total of 11 songs. Mike Shinoda said of the album, Before Linkin Park, our first band name was Zero. This album title refers to both this humble beginning and the journey that we're currently undertaking. Sonically and emotionally, it is about past, present, and future, embracing our signature sound, but new and full of life. It was made with a deep appreciation for our new and longtime bandmates, our friends, our family, and our fans. We are proud of what Linkin Park has become over the years and excited about the journey ahead. He also said of their new members, the more we worked with Emily and Colin, the more we enjoyed their world-class talents, their company, and the things we created. We feel really empowered with this new lineup and the vibrant and energized new music we've made together. We're weaving together the sonic touch points we've been known for and still exploring new ones. And we're still not done. In addition to the song and album details, Linkin Park also shared six more reunion concert dates that are set to take place in 2024. So if you weren't one of the lucky fans in attendance at their special show in Los Angeles today, you still have a chance to see them live really soon. The first two concerts will take place in the US, one on September 11th at the Forum in Los Angeles and the other on September 16th at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Then they'll play Germany on September 22nd, London on September 24th, South Korea on September 28th, and Colombia on November 11th. Members of the band's Linkin Park Underground fan club will have exclusive access to a fan presale on September 6th, and then the general sale will be held on September 7th. For more details on how to get tickets and to pre-order the album From Zero, you can visit Linkin Park's website. So now that we got all the new information out of the way, what's been going on in the Linkin Park world over the last couple of years that led us to this point? Like I said earlier, Linkin Park have kept a pretty low profile since Chester Bennington tragically died in 2017, and his death seemed like the end of the band for a while. Some of the members have subtly alluded to potentially continuing on as a group, but there was never any official talk of finding a new vocalist to carry on with. Throughout 2023, Linkin Park shared a couple of previously unreleased tracks from the Meteora sessions to celebrate its 20th anniversary, and earlier this year, they shared an outtake from One More Light called Friendly Fire. But even that didn't seem to point to a reunion of any kind. That is, until Orgy frontman Jay Gordon said in an interview in early 2024 that he heard Linkin Park were working with a female vocalist. As Gordon's remarks went viral, he quickly tried to backtrack and say that his words were taken out of context, but it was too late. And no, his words were not taken out of context. Fans online already started speculating who the new singer could be, and Amy Lee of Evanescence was one of the first that came to mind. Lee denied the rumor, calling it an incredible compliment, and saying that she she'd be open to the idea if she were able to do it part-time. Things really started to get spicy recently, though. On August 24th, Linkin Park launched a 100-hour countdown timer on their website and their social media accounts, and it was set to expire four days later on Wednesday the 28th. During that time, Some 41's Derek Wibley teased an announcement of his own for the same day, so many wondered if he would be revealed as their new vocalist. Like Lee, though, Wibley shot down the rumors as they spread like wildfire, assuring that his impending announcement was just related to the book tour he'd recently announced. So it was back to the drawing board while we waited for the clock to hit zero. Except when it did, nothing really happened. The numbers on the timer glitched a little bit and then it started counting back up. So it felt like the band was really just trolling everyone. 
Some fans realized they would probably uncover something if they left the timer open though, and realized that there was another glitch animation when the clock hit 9 minutes and 5 seconds, and a few other times later on too. The next day, Linkin Park confirmed on their social media that something was happening on September 5th, with the caption, be part of something. So we scoped out the band's Reddit page and discovered that members of the Linkin Park Underground fan club received emails with unique access codes for an event that was happening on September 5th in Los Angeles between the hours of 12 and 5.30 Pacific time. According to screenshots of the email, there were a couple of restrictions for the event, including an 18 and up age limit, one ticket per guest rule, and absolutely no resales. In order to RSVP yes to the event, fans had to confirm that they'd be in Los Angeles on September 5th. RSVPing yes didn't guarantee a ticket either, but a chance to be entered for one. At this point, we didn't really know what the event was. While the obvious assumption would be that it was a concert, others pointed out the large window of time noted in the fan club email and suggested that it may be for something like a music video shoot instead. Regardless, the speculation continued, especially about who the new vocalist may be and what the next chapter of Linkin Park could look like. Some of the vocalists rumored were Lizzie Hale, since she shared a piano and vocal cover of the band's song Crawling while all the teasers were going up, Bobby Amaru of Saliva, Tyler Joseph of 21 Pilots, Emily Armstrong of Dead Sarah, Ding Ding Ding, Ollie Sykes of Bring Me the Horizon, Bonnie Fraser of Stan Atlantic, and a couple of others. 100 hours after the timer on Linkin Park's website started counting back up, it stopped again. And this time, two things happened. A purple distorted image popped up and about 20 seconds of audio played. leading fans to believe that new music was also underway. And that's exactly what they got, along with getting to hear Linkin Park's classics with their new members. Let us know what you think of The Emptiness Machine in the comments below, and what else you hope Linkin Park's future holds. For more on Linkin Park's comeback, like upcoming shows, things you need to know about their new singer Emily Armstrong, and to take a look at the lyrics for their new song, head on over to loudwire.com. And while you're there, check out the campaign line on our merch store so you can get yours in time for the election.